Hey guys, we're from Game Bad today, bringing you another video, and today we're going to go over all of the Galil builds here in Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Warzone, or the Cold War, as this is a Cold War weapon. So we'll go through all of the different builds you can make for the Galil here in this game. So first off, let's go ahead and back out, and we'll go back to the main version of the Warzone game, and we'll look at the Battle Pass. So this is a free weapon here in the Battle Pass, and you can see if we go through, this is going to be unlocked at tier 30 so it'll be our second free weapon here for the season you can see here the grab or the galil now this is basically an exact copy that we saw for the same version or the weapon added in uh black ops 4 or in blackout as well so basically the same version is going to be unlocked for free on tier 30 here as the grab and again this is the galil arm so I'll go ahead and back out we'll go back to our private match where we have these pre-built and we'll go over to our weapon. So here's the ARM just at base. Now, one thing to note here really quick is I'm going to take the stock off and we'll back out. Now, at base, this weapon, same as Black Ops 4, it appears, looks like it has something very similar to an AS Val stock. So that is basically a copy-paste of the AS Val stock there. The same shape, everything. So it's not quite a Galil stock. It's an AS Val stock. So what we'll do here is the only change we'll make for the ARM, and then you can obviously put any custom attachments on would be the marathon stock this obviously isn't perfect but it's as close as we'll get so that bottom curvature on the bottom part of the stock will be a little bit more angled uh to the to the right from what you're seeing here so it won't be as drastic as a curve but other than that it's basically the same stock with a cheek rest there and that's our galil arm now some features with this weapon basically the galil if you're not aware was developed by israeli galili back in the late 1960s put into service in 1972 through present and its modern variation is the IWY Ace is basically the modern iteration of this Galil, which we have that in Modern Warfare. So first off with this weapon, it's basically think of it as a reversed engineered AK. It is basically in 556, and obviously there's other conversions here for 762 as well. Now some features on this weapon here are going to obviously be the uh magazine paddle here you can see some features here the same magazine paddle as the AK and they do have that little protector there right below the trigger guard that allows you to not accidentally hit the paddle to release the magazine and then if you notice if I turn this to the to the left a little bit here the right you can see how that magazine paddle the release paddle sticking out to the right there a little bit because there's that blocker so you don't accidentally hit it you can hit it obviously out to the side or put your finger under so that's going to stick out a little bit to make it easier to release the magazine paddle you also have the same select fire switch here on the right hand side as the AK pattern rifles. This one is based off of a semi-auto build so you can see it only has select and safe and again that's the same select fire option that we see there on the AKs there on the right hand side. However there was also this feature added on the pistol grip. The top of the pistol grip here on the right hand side you can flick this with your thumb. So you can see right there it's in fire and then we have safety. So you can flick that with your thumb or flick this with your index finger and it would switch the fire mode. And if I flicked it with my thumb here to safety, the same result is here connected. So this would go to safety as well here on the right hand side. So that's one feature. These optics are flip up optics. They have two different position optics, as well as they have illuminated night vision uh, lighting there. Not really here. It doesn't appear they have this on the in game version, but that would be the real life. Charging handle here on the right hand side. Again, same as the AK. However, they tilted it up so it's more ambidextrous. So you can. Do the same thing here you can do it you can charge the weapon with your right hand or if you're doing it with your left hand you can reach over the top here and because it's up you can grab that and just slide it back nice and easily as well and then another thing here we do have the carrying handle which was added as well as the bipod which is fixed here to the bottom of the barrel and one thing here with the bipod is that right here if we go ahead and turn it good attention to detail here the bottom of the bipod you see that little uh that little like mouth type structure there, those are wire cutters right on the base of where the bipod would extend here, right below the gap, the very bottom down from the gas block. You see those little, that little hook sticking out. Those are wire cutters to cut wire. And then when we have the bipod extended, which unfortunately we don't have a bipod option on the weapon, but when the bipod's extended, those little lips there that hold the bipod could be used as a bottle opener, which is a uh, pretty cool attention to detail. And the reason they did that is because the soldiers were using the magazines here the feed lips they were using those as bottle cutters so to prevent them from doing that they went ahead and put bottle openers here right where that bipod would fold up right where the handguard connects to the upper and lower receiver there is where you would be able to stick the bottle in there where that bipod is folded up and open up 
bottle. So that's really the gist of this weapon. You still have you have 90 degree gas block. Same, I believe it's a very similar gas block as the AK panel rifles. They fixed the rear aperture sights here on the dust cover, as well as they extended the dust cover release there in order to allow for a fixed grenade launcher on top of the weapon for the, the uh, barrel. So they made some nice changes here. Basically think of it as a updated and modernized, I guess an, just an updated AK with improved features, reverse engineered in 5.56, as well as other calibers as well, which we'll go into. So this is the base ARM, and you have that wooden uh, handguard there, which is a little bit different from the real life handguard. Now, if we go ahead and look at another version here, this is the SAR. So the SAR came in a few different barrel lengths. Now this is the 7.62 version of the weapon. So Go figure, the very last season of Cold War, they added a we weapon or with ammo conversion. So here we have the RK-7 magazine, and this converts this from 556 by 45 NATO to 762 by 51 NATO with a 30-round FAL magazine is what it appears. It's not the typical magazine you would find with the Galil in 762. It does appear to be more of an FAL magazine. So this would give you the only, I believe this is the only ammo conversion of all of the Cold War weapons, which is actually good to see. Unfortunately, they waited to the very last season. There was a lot of missed opportunities, but they finally did it and they added one of these, which is pretty cool. So another thing here is with the 7.62 version of the SAR, the barrel length in real life is going, going to be at 15.7 inches. However, we don't really have the right barrel option for that. We have 15.7 here with the Cavalier Lancer, and that would be more so... For the 5.56 version as well, this is the shortest barrel version we can get. So we could actually do this, but I'll show you why we can switch it up to either or. So you can do the 15.7 inch Lance, Cavalier Lancer or the 18.7 inch Takedown or the 19.8 inch Ranger. Either or because they give you the right hand guard and uh, just for comparison with the right sizes for the barrel length. So for this one purposes in real life, it would be a 15.7. So we'll stick with that here for the 7.62 by 51 NATO version. I put the SOCOM Eliminator on there just for aesthetic purposes. We have the foregrip here. Now, one thing I thought of was interesting for the foregrip is it's not even, if we look at this quick, it's not even connected to the weapon. So you can see there, it's just floating below the handguard and you can see the back of the carrying handle through that. So if I were to look here, you can see when I turn this weapon, you'll see the carrying handle in the background. So you can see part of the carrying handle, if you guys look at this, in the background. So this isn't even connected to the handguard. You can see it right there. It's just kind of floating there, which is hopefully that's something they fix because it's actually, you know, there's a pretty pretty large gap there that you can see where this is not connected to the handguard so hopefully they fix that there's it looks like there's you know half an inch gap or maybe even more there so it looks very awkward it's not even connected to the handguard so that's why i threw that on there obviously we could switch up the stock to the right version of the stock with the marathon stock if you really wanted to you could swap out the eliminator but this is going to be the 7.62 version of the sar which is basically the uh, shorter version of the barrel you could also just do a base version or a different barrel length like I did with the 19.8 H or the 18.7 because in real life if we go ahead and switch out here and go down to the 5.56 version of the SAR again this is a shorter barrel variant of the ARM in 5.56 so in real life this version has a 13 inch barrel I believe it's around 13 and a half or 13.2 inches or something like that so in real life this would be a 13 point 13 inch barrel at at base unfortunately the 15.7 is the shortest we have now that lines up with the 762 version of the sar so this is really is the shortest we're going to get so that's why i initially selected a larger or a longer barrel length for the 762 variant to try and make up for that difference but again that's just personal preference we'll also just put a suit set on there again more of a modernized uh looking optic and again this the galil sar 556 is, is been in use up to modern day it was served in iraq as well we have the marathon stock for the correct looking butt stock we have the standard 556 magazine you can also throw on something like a 50 round magazine i believe it's basically the same exact looking magazine i don't really think there's a big difference with the length of this i think it's just a different aesthetic to the magazine and then under barrel attachment you could obviously put one on here the only problem, like I said, is that none of them actually connect to the handguard, so it looks a little weird. And then one thing interesting with the laser here, they're connected to the end of the barrel, which uh, I don't really, I'm not sure if in real life the Galils did that. Typically, these would connect to the side of the, uh, to the handguard, or often they would be canted mounted on the barrel or something like that, so they wouldn't overheat. So interesting choice. I'm not, I cannot comment if that's how they had them in real life. Plus, this is such an old rifle, I don't really think 
By the time you were putting lasers on these rifles, you had the modernized version of this, the IWI Ace, which is out, which actually had Picatinny's to uh, account for that. So one thing also interesting here with this version of the SAR, um, the Galilas had a, a proprietary version of their own optic mount. So basically here, right above the magazine, you see that little divot above the magazine well here, right below the serial number, there's that little divot there. That would be used a proprietary version of the optic mount. Instead, it looks like they're using a dovetail mount, which would be the same used for the AKs. However, in game here, they're not using it where the actual optic mount would be for that attachment. So they're using it where the AK dovetail would be. However, if we remove the optic and look at this, there's no dovetail mount there. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to be connected to. Just a mistake there in game, I'm sure. But it should be mounted forward further near the uh, right above the magazine well. You can see see where that's mounted. It should be closer further to the left where that where that divot is there right below the serial number is where that would go. So this is mounted a little bit too off to the side. They basically, I think they just copy and pasted the same dovetail attachment that the AKs have in the game. So that's the SSAR in 5.56. And then we also have just the standard AR version here. And in real life, the AR version here, and if we look at the 5.56 version, this is gonna be a longer barrel, typically all around an 18. It can go anywhere from an 18.1 to a 21. So I did a 19.8 inch here. You can also do the 21 inch or the 22 inch would also work and you have kind of a correct looking handguard there. If you wanted the wooden handguard, the 22 or the 21, however, it's not really the correct wooden handguard. So you could go, if you wanted the AR and 21.1 inches, which would be 762, I believe, you can go ahead and do this and swap out that magazine. And this would give you the AR in 7.62. And if you wanted the 5.56 version, you go ahead and go ahead and select back to the 18.7 would be the closest just because in real life I think it was around 18 standard. So that would be that would be the AR in 556. So those are all the conversions here for the IMI Galil. And again, it's a modern version of this. If we go ahead and we already have overkill on, so if we go ahead and look down, we'll show off the modernized version is the CR56 Amax here in Modern Warfare's game. And in real life, again, this is the same this is basically the modernized version of the galil so we'll go ahead let's put some attachments on this and compare them side by side so we can see and again this is in this is in the russian caliber 762 by 39 millimeter go ahead and just put something on this to make it look we can put a laser on there you can see how that's mounted so again laser on the amax you can see it's mounted candid on the uh top picatinny rail so look at these two side by side you have the old and the new, the IMI Galil, and you have the IWI Galil Ace in 7.62x39 versus 556x45 NATO. So those are all of the conversions for the most part or all the different builds for the IMI Galil. Now obviously, you can swap out, swap out some handguards. None of them are 100% accurate to the real-life version, but all the details for the weapon are pretty close to accurate for the most part. Things like the wire cutters, the bottle cap opener, things like that. Uh, looks pretty good. Pretty good weapon. I don't have any gameplay because I don't have it unlocked yet. But let me know what you guys think down below. Till next time, this is Buffner Gaming with all of the Galil builds here in Black Ops Cold War Season 6. Till next time, Buffner Gaming, out.